Kevin, thanks so much for being back on the show, man. It's always a pleasure to have you here and quite an honor. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Nice to be here with you. So first, let me just start by saying that the last Ronin up to this point has been fucking amazing. Like, I think the last time I uh, <laughs> spoke to you was right after the first issue came out. And uh, boy, I mean, that in itself was great. But, you know, now that we've seen the four issues and Mikey's journey and, you know, how the families died, it's just been really playing on the heartstrings and so excited for issue five to come out, which is dropping April 27th, I believe. That's correct. Yeah. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. But one of the last things I uh, asked you last time we spoke was uh, if there was a possibility once this story arc was completed, if we'd be able to, if we'd ever get a chance to see Mikey in this, in the future setting you guys currently have him in past this story arc. And you said you were wanting to kind of wait and see, you know, how fans reacted uh, to what you guys had done here. And, you know, I'm not seeing anything from where you're sitting, obviously, but you know, based from where I'm sitting, it seems like you guys have gotten an overwhelming uh, positive reaction from it. So I just kind of wanted to pose that question to you again now, you know, here that we're looking down the barrel of issue five. Is this a world we could see further stories in? Well, th thanks for asking. And, you know, first and foremost, I want to thank, you know, yourself and, and so many of the fans that have waited for these in these huge gaps between each issue. And it's it's been more of a you know, it's my fault. Basically, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm a massive perfectionist, and 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 you know, and I'm not saying that's the whole team has been so dedicated to doing uh, bringing the A game and doing. You know, it's been such a joy working with Tom, the Scorza brothers, Ben Bishop, the incredible um, Louis Delgado who did the coloring, and Sean. The whole it takes a village, and you know, I couldn't have done it. We couldn't have done it uh, without each other, and it's been such an experience. And it's, um, uh, it's been very organic, and that's what's. Um, cool about it because it reminds me very much of like the early days when Pete and I would work together that would sort of beat out a, a outline of what the story would be and then through layouts and processes of adjusting the script and adjusting the story letting the story evolve naturally is the same approach we took here um, so we none of it was off a final script it was just sort of as we wrote sequences and did layouts and the thing whole built and it was sort of it was a journey built and we were sort of along for the ride in some cases, which has been fantastic. Um, we love this world. We love the world that we created with the last run in and it's, it has been and it said everything that um, I certainly wanted to stay uh, with it. Um, and it's sort of, you know, um, it'll have a finality to it, um, but it is much like any story, you know, you want it, you know, issue one was the beginning, this is the end, but the doors open for opportunities and, and we don't know what those are still yet but we love the, the universe of the last one that we created and i feel like you know you hear um you know people will say use the buzzword you know multiverse um more commonly recently um but it's been around for forever i mean whether you're talking marvel comics or dc comics sure. and all the different universes that they've had we've certainly experienced ours with uh in mirage with the turtles with the original you know, Mirage Black and White universe, the Archie, the animated universe, the 2007 Kevin Monroe movie, you know, you name it's we've, we've been through a, a bunch of different iterations. And we're lucky enough that the fans have stuck with us and allowed us to do something like Last Ronin, which is another iteration, sort of our Dark Knight version of uh, the Turtle universe. Um, and man, it was um, um, overwhelmingly well received more than we hoped for we we hoped that we would at least really sell as many as the original as the ongoing series and it's gone so far beyond that it's uh it's really been a wow. gift that the, you guys have, have brought to us so um love to see some more stories in this universe we don't know what they are yet um but um you know with last run and now off to press um uh, tom and i have we you know we've certainly not neglected the ongoing series but we've been plotting and, and planning stuff um that we're doing in and around sophie campbell's universe within the ongoing which has been so much fun um, but we're going to be doing um, a new storyline called the Armageddon Games and some other stuff. So we got some pretty exciting turtle stuff while we figure out what to do after Last Roman. Sure. Well, I'm excited, man. And yeah, again, thanks. bravo, because, you know, I haven't obviously read the last one yet, but so far, damn good. And uh, just to clarify, because I don't want to be mistaken before I ask this question, but Last Ronin was originally something that yourself and Peter had Kind of sketched the concept for and then you, you know you blew the dust off and brought it to fruition correct that is correct and that is correct and to to, to clarify it was um when peter and i uh, around 1987 we were sort of getting to the end of a very large story arc that we had 
run, I think, through issues all the way up through issue 10 with the with the uh, Turtles 11, rather, and uh, some of the one shots that sort of all dovetailed into this, this storyline. And we were thinking like, well, where do we do, um, where do we go next? And we said, well, let's look, say, potentially at a final Turtles story 30 years down the road and see where they would might end up there as an experiment and then it'd be something to let's discuss it and then we can navigate towards it right. and so we broke down about a 15 to 20 page outline of what that final story would be and then never got to it um just you know one thing you know whether it be because right after that 1987 that was pre-toys pre-movies pre-cartoons pre-everything that just exploded and then you know our world changed and so many things changed and so when we uh arrived at this point with uh, Turtles, uh, the IDW Turtle Universe um, approaching issue 100, I said to Tom, I said, look, Peter and I wrote this idea back in 1987. Let's look at it again and see if it applies to what we want to do. Maybe look 20 years down the road from where things are in the uh, IDW universe. And that was sort of the starting point and the jumping off point. And um, uh, I guess to clarify further, it's not within the IDW universe that this story takes place is not within specifically in the Mirage universe, but it is definitely leans heavily towards the Mirage universe. It's, it's sort of a, um, a universe within itself, but it is sort of, you know, I guess if you put Turtles issue one and last Ronin in a, in a book, you'd have a complete beginning and a complete quote unquote ending. So, uh, right. So um, having clarified that then, are there any other unused Eastman Laird uh, concepts that could possibly see uh, the light of day in the future or no? I, I wish, you know, I don't think so. And I think, and I mean that um, in that I, I'm a, you should see the folder. I mean, it's like, I've got this folder that like, um, it's just scraps and notes. And when Pete, Pete and I would sit and talk together about ideas of doing this thing and that thing, um, we'd both keep notes and, and sort of tuck them away and you know pull them out for another rainy day. Um, and this, uh, the last Ronin concept was the, the furthest developed. Um, it was, uh, I think nice. again, in total, it was about 20 pages um, uh, of, of typed and sketched and, and sketchbook notes that sort of comprise that story. But, um, but I have to dig through that again, just to, just to make sure, because there were some, there were some funny ideas um, and, and right. yeah, bouncing around in those days. I'd be interested to see for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, just a few more questions here. You mentioned uh, yourself and Tom Waltz, uh, along with Sophie Campbell, you know, still working on the current IDW series, which has maintained its integrity. It's, it's so good. It, it pays perfect homage to everything that's come before it. And uh, speaking of that, you know, in issue 127, that's going to be coming out, we're seeing the return of Venus to Milo. Uh, looking to be told in kind of a different way than she was told in the next mutation. Is, can you highlight anything? Like, tell us anything about that, what we can expect? Yeah, I just, besides, you know, Sophie Campbell's brilliant. Um, I, I've always, uh, I've been a huge fan of, of her work. Um, uh, in, in fact, uh, we would, I was talking with her recently because we, um, um, I ran late on a cover and she inked something that I then colored in and stuff. But so I, uh, we've got one of her, um, that cover she did with Michelangelo sitting on the sitting on the tree stump taking notes on our yes. wall here in the studio and I traded it for some piece so I said we have to trade more pieces so <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed um, what she's done with the series since uh, Tom and I stepped off to do Last Ronin it's been um, so creative and so innovative and so interesting and you know besides her, her I, I think her artistic style and the people that she's brought into that and the exploration of all things in Mutant Town has been fantastic and so as we look further down the road in conversations that Tom and I have had with her um, uh, um, we wanted to go back into expand back out into the world outside of Mutant Town but keep it fully integrated with um, um, all the cool stuff that's been developed in, in that. So it's just making, just broadening the canvas a little bit, making it a little bit bigger. Um, Venus was one of those ideas that um, much like, uh, you know, she, she brought back uh, Toka and Rezar, um, so many other characters into the mix that she's loved Venus. Tom and I love Venus. That's why we brought Jenica to life. Uh, Tom's right. brainchild really, um, and uh, added a female turtle to the mix. But th she had an idea of how to do it in a way that's very special, very unique, and I'm not going to give any spoilers, but uh, sure. I can't wait for people to read it because it is exceptionally clever and uh, and um, and cool, and it's and it's a, a great addition not only as a story concept in the turtle universe, but as a as another character. So I can't wait for people to read it. 
I, I can't wait to read it either. Very excited to see that. The, the, the art that's been released looks amazing. Absolutely okay. amazing. So. Cool. Very excited. Um, one last question for you. I can't help notice, yep. but on your t-shirt there, you're wearing a radically rearranged Ronin Ragdoll shirt. Yes. Freaking awesome. So uh, as far as drawing blood goes, are we going to get a volume three or has it just been kind of pushed to the side because of the work uh, last Ronin has required? It, we are going to get that. In fact, you know, I apologize to the fans to that as well for on behalf of uh, David Avaloni and Troy Little and, and series artist, main series artist Ben Bishop is as things evolved with last Ronin, um, I literally, you know, with Dave and I talked about it, we, I literally stole Ben from um, last, I mean, uh, from Drawing Blood to do these sections of last Ronin um, that he was perfect for. Um, so he's been an important part of that. So we are now literally wrapping up, um, close to wrapping up um, the 2019 Kickstarter, which is issues five through eight, plus a 40 page um, uh, ragdolls uh, one shot that David and, and Troy um, conceived and came up with and it's it's laugh out loud funny so we're going to um, complete um, uh, that and, and get that all up to all the Kickstarter fans over the summer we had planned the uh, drawing blood series to go through issue 12 um, again with you know the door won't be closed at issue 12 but this particular storyline was intended to go from issue 1 to 12 so we um, we're um, very frugal with um, uh, uh, the generosity of um, our fans that supported through Kickstarter. So we're going to be able to self-fund and do um, the, um, uh, the the final um, uh, four issues out of pocket. So we don't have to do a Kickstarter and do all that. To, to, oh, to, nice. So we're going to roll that. And we're, we've been working with Scout to try to come up with a program of what we could work together. So hopefully we can make a proper announcement there as a, as a publisher that will run all through 12. And then we'll have some new ragdoll story sort of in the mix as well but um yeah we're back to uh, drawing blood with a vengeance and ragdolls all things ragdolls so appreciate the fans waiting and i'm excited for them to see um this next four issues uh, issues five six seven and eight are just absolutely fantastic it's um the evolution it brings to the series is exceptional fans are going to dig it well man the wait for your work is always worth it so <laughs> i'm very looking forward to it i've got to get me one of those shirts because it looks freaking awesome <laughs> <laughs> and, I always I say that you know um, I always do the the plug because people you know and and I want I have to end some of these interviews with saying that we're super excited to be back out on the road again. Uh, we're doing conventions. Uh, Courtney's teed us up six conventions this year, and if fans want to go to KevinEastmanStudios.com, you can find out things like you can find things like these shirts and uh, where we're going to be. Um, shows I think next up is uh, our first one of this year is uh, Louis uh, Lexington Kentucky which is um, the end of this okay. month and Huntsville Alabama that, that. but um, yeah tune in today and you can find out what we're and when and what we're doing and, and how we're doing it and, um, and, and you can leave us notes there and hopefully we'll see you out there <laughs> <laughs> absolutely man I'm going to try to make my way down so Thanks so much, man. I'm going to put links uh, attached to this episode to make it easier for people to get over there and uh, just have a great day, man. Thank you so much. And, and hey, enjoy Spider-Man, all right? Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> Super <laughs> excited. So back to work. Enjoy your day and uh, we'll talk to you again, my friend. All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right.